So it's my pleasure to have the opportunity to interview Ron Johnson, who is the uh, CEO of Enjoy. And before we kind of get into the questions, one of the interesting trivia things about Ron is not only is he regarded as one of the uh, most uh, important retailers in the world, by, by uh, my opinion. By Mike. My opinion, but true. So not only do we live on the same street in, um, on the peninsula at Atherton, but we actually grew up in the same hometown um, in the suburb of Minneapolis, you down in Minnesota. So anyway, it's, it's fun to have the opportunity with Ron. So Ron, talk about the, the, the journey kind of to here in terms of what got you to enjoy and some of the things that you've sure. done and why you know, enjoy you think is, is such sure. an important thing. So I, I spent my entire career since business school in the consumer retail business. I started unloading trucks at a Mervyn store when all your Harvard Business School when guys were going to Wall Street? They were all, I turned down a job in Goldman's M&A Group, which was kind of hard to get at the time. Somehow I got that, but I, I wanted to be a retailer. I wanted to learn an industry, and I started unloading trucks, then I got promoted to cashier, was a merchant, eventually was a merchant at Target. During that time when Target became Target, I was kind of the senior merchant. Went to Apple, did the Apple retail stores, went to Penny's, was gonna turn that around, but the board had different ideas. And then I founded uh, Enjoy, along with a good friend, Tom Souter, about five years ago. And the idea behind Enjoy is just so simple. We're moving to a digital world where people are ordering more online. All we really have is digital convenience. You know, uh, Amazon leads that with, you know, pretty fast delivery and you order. In the physical world, if your product is kind of uh, premier, it tends to be sold in a premier last mile or experience. Think of the Apple store. Now, how do you deliver a premier experience in an online world? So I believe, you know, 10, 10 20 years from now, there'll be products for which we want convenience, and others we want help. And in this mobile world where more people actually work with mobile economy companies, like Uber and TaskRabbit, whatever, how do you deliver a person through the door and deliver the service experience in your home or office? And so what Enjoy does is we provide super fast personal delivery. So if you order from one of our partners, in about three hours, we will be wherever you want with a person, with a product, set it up, teach you how to use it for free. And so it's free personal delivery, super fast. And our partners are people like AT&T. You know, we will do most AT&T online phones. Um, Sonos, you might have heard of, DJI. Uh, others that I can't announce, but we're kind of getting started in this whole delivery experience for the world's best companies uh, when you want to start online. So talk about the challenges that some of the, the old guard faces, the Best Buy, for, for example, yeah. and, and talk about how you changed the game as it relates to um, you know, kind of the future of retail and the pressures you put on somebody like that. Yeah, so, so Best Buy has done a very good job in navigating the consumer electronics industry, mainly because they're the only one left. So years ago, we had people like CompUSA, Circuit City. When Amazon started growing, the first category they go to in almost every country, you see this in Australia that they launched six months ago, is consumer electronics. The products are highly identifiable. People tend to want to buy them at a discount. You're going to buy a TV once. I want a good value. Amazon did really well. But when Uber came in, you know, six years ago, whatever it was, I don't know exactly. That's the French, French, the French, French transportation. Mr. Jolie, I think it is, isn't that? I think it was my I thought they said Uber. No. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, sorry. My when fault. he came in, he said, we're going to be priced with Amazon. We're going to deliver a better experience. And Best Buy is actually holding serve and kind of the stock's at an all-time high. So in that category, most of the business is done through Amazon and Best Buy. 
But Best Buy has learned to transfer all of their cost of running retail to their partners. So if you go to a Best Buy store today, you see an Apple store inside that was paid for by Apple, staffed by Apple people. You see Samsung stores, you see Google stores, you see an Amazon store inside Best Buy. So they've done a really good job as the last one standing with a significant business model and significant reach of passing along the heavy costs of retail to their partners. But the partners really don't have an alternative because you need some physical presence to hunt and show new products. And there's nowhere else to go. You know, so Best Buy is really holding serve. The challenge they have today is there's less and less traffic to the store because we're all visiting stores less frequently. And it's been dropping you know, pretty close to double digits every year. And so it's hard to introduce new products in a world like that. And so Best Buy actually has people now that they hire that go out to your home and will kind of help you determine what do you want to do with the smart home. And they'll help you place an order, which will then be shipped by Best Buy you know, days later. And then if you want help, you can hire the Geek Squad. who will come a few days later. And you'll spend money, 99 bucks an hour, to have them help you out. And that's how they're trying to navigate it. So I think for Best Buy, the challenge today is how do you get traffic in the store? They've learned how to be profitable competing with Amazon. It's kind of one of those things. Amazon's focused on other things. They're moving to apparel, moving to other countries, you know, battling Walmart. You know, Best Buy is just kind of a more of a friendly competitor, if you will. So, and, and one of the things that made the Apple Store so amazing were the people in this. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the service in the stores. Yeah. And, Talk about what you're doing with your experts at Enjoy, and then contrast that, you know, how you're developing them and so forth, and how you compensate, and then contrast that with some of these other kind of on-demand concepts, like, an, you know, an Instacart or TaskRabbit or, Lyft, you know, for that matter, Lyft and Uber. Yeah, so most of us don't have a relationship with our Uber driver. It's a transactional purchase where it's very convenient. That's true with groceries being delivered, everything. Because we go through the door, and we represent the world's best companies, you know, we felt that we had to own the employee. So every one of our employees that enjoy our 500 or whatever experts are all employees of the company. They have stock, salary, et cetera. And they all stay around. We have a 90% retention after four years of doing this. So people love their jobs. Uh, we train them heavily. You know, they all go through 30 to 60 days of training before they serve a customer. But the most important thing we've done is we've found a way to connect them to one another and to headquarters where we know our employees in the field better than a store manager at Apple would know the employees working in the store, which is hard to imagine, but we do. I personally write a note to every expert once a month. I can go <coughs> on my phone today and see the results of every expert's visit and how well they did for our partners in real time. And we actually have turned the work of delivering an experience into a competitive sport, where we're organized into markets, you know, the Bay Area, Los Angeles. We're in 16 markets today, expanding pretty quickly. But every week, one team plays another. And every day, best of seven wins. So if you win four days, you win a prize, you go on to the playoffs. And so we've turned work into sport. And it really makes it fun for the teams to be connected. They have a huddle in the morning, halftime call. So we've tried to create a great job for Mobile World. The benefit, I can tell which experts are doing a great job, which ones need to improve. We can do ride-alongs, all kinds of stuff. So we have unbelievable access to data to motivate our teams. And they love doing this. Yeah, it's really cool. If you think, picture you know, EP, ESPN Sports Center, and that's how the day it enjoys starts with yeah. Ron being sort of the... We have a studio where Good Morning Enjoy is Monday morning. We run an East Coast version, a West Coast, and a Central. And we're live for 20 minutes when the experts come in, broadcasting how the previous day go, what are the priorities, who's going to win. It's just trying to make work fun. But if you think about it, like I never had that at Apple. Our store just went in there and did their job. I had no idea which geniuses were doing the best genius bar work, who was selling. We, we didn't have any of that. But I now know in real time what's happened today in every market with every expert. And so it's pretty amazing in this mobile economy, if you get the model right, how you can deliver quality. And, and our business model is pretty interesting because we get to share in the value that we create in every visit. And so we've got you know, 
pre-unlimited upside. Couple questions. One, just touch on NPS real quick. Sure. Which I think reflects sort of the experience. Yeah, of our, our NPS runs in the mid 90s. You know, so it's quite high. Um, there are some companies that are still negative. You know, I think most people would be happy in the retail business. Like an Apple store might be at 60 or 70 percent. We run mid 90s, uh, which means they all like it. But we're free. We're within three hours. We provide as much help as you need getting set up. You know, if it's a Sonos speaker, we put it in the right place in the room. We tune the room. We show you music service. So we don't leave till you're up and running. And we're nice. So it's pretty hard not to like a service experience like that. And so the, the art of great service is to design in an experience that's pretty hard to miss on. And we've been able to do that pretty well so far. So talk about the model a little bit more. So we talk about free. Mm -hmm. how, and how does this model work for Joy if it doesn't cost the customer anything? Yeah. You're effectively bringing a mobile store. Yeah, we're bringing a mobile. Well, the way it started, every partner said, we like the idea of you delivering a product and helping our customer, but they should pay for that. That's more service than I get if I just ship it, and I charge for same-day delivery. And we said, no, you should, if your most expensive way to sell a product is through Best Buy, or it's through a store. You don't charge people for walking in the store. We didn't collect money when you walked in the Apple store. So the reality, the physical retail is the most expensive channel you have. Online shipping is cheap, but it's got some real negatives. You get a lot of returns. You get a lot of calls to the call center. You have a lot of fraud. So what Enjoy does is we come in, we started out coming in a little higher than just online, way below what it would be to sell through a retail store, said we'll deliver an experience. But then we learned as we went through this that we save so much on returns and calls and fraud that there's value in that. But then when we bring our little mobile store, we have those Rimawa, you know, Louis Vuitton suitcases that are literally outfitted with our products with all the accessories. So when we show up at the house, we take out, here's your new phone. If you'd like an accessory, here's the new Apple charger. Here's a screen. We can sell those and visit. Every time we do that, we're generating value that we share with our partners. And so by the time we're done with every partner, of, we turn the cost of shipping into a profit center for them through bringing the store and the savings and solutions. So it's a, it's a pretty good little economic model uh, for our partners. And that's why you know, we're actually doing pretty well. So talk about doing well. Give some of the, without being precise, talk about some of the growth metrics in terms of cities. and. Uh, yeah, we'll be, we'll, we don't, we, we stay pretty quiet. But okay. We will cover more zip codes in the US this year than Apple does through its retail stores. And that's, they've been doing it for, 17 years. We will serve more customers than Amazon does through Prime Now. So for our partners, they can provide this experience to more customers than Apple can do in their retail stores, which is pretty interesting. So we're pretty happy about that. Um, and our volumes are growing a lot, which we're happy about. But like anything, it takes time. You know, people, I've had a reasonably successful you know there's no great careers but it's been you know seen as pretty good but i was talking to my son will a little while ago and i said you know i've worked now for 34 years and if i counted how many great years i had it's been about 11 where your teams are flourishing you're like apple when we launched the ipod in 2004 our stores had a great year that was a good year now 2001 two and three when we were just building out the first stores and learning how to run jeans bars they were really hard and we were below plan, and Apple was below plan. So the point is, you never have all success. Most of the time, you're either building something, you're fixing something, you're creating something, right? And so it's hard. Uh, and, but it's really fun now with Enjoy, because we're now having our first year that's a flourishing year. You know, we're clearly knocking the cover off the ball in every which way you'd want to. And it's kind of fun to be having another good year. Um, but we don't talk a lot about it, because you know, why do you want to invite a lot of copycats? People don't really understand you can deliver a smart last mile versus a dumb last mile. Everything you have today, from Instacart to Uber to Postmates, if you really think about it, they're really delivering. There's no value other than the convenience of the speed, right? If you bring the intelligence with you, you can go through doors and really create value. 
Well, that can be done in a lot of industries in a mobile world. But you know, we don't feel any need because we're a B2B company to market in Joy, because most of our business is marketed by our partners, because we show up as the choice in the shopping cart. So you go to an AT&T shopping cart, you pick up in store, you have Enjoy delivered. That's it. Really simple, right? Um, so, you know, and, and I think the people who know Enjoy, and increasingly a lot more people who know Enjoy, you think of it as really a technology, bringing technology mm -hmm. to the to the home or the office. Recently announced a, a, a partnership, and I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher the name, but Tigger. the Tigger, the watch company. Talk about that and, and how that might play we're into the future. You know, yeah. like we're, we're in our fourth year of delivering, which is where Amazon would have been in 1997 when they were starting to move beyond books. Right? So we're early in this. Our focus is consumer electronics. Uh, High-end watches are a luxury product where you love to you know, look at four or five watches and see what you want to keep. You know, so we can deliver a watch to your home really efficiently um, and help you get set up with that. And it's a high economic value thing. So we have a partnership to do just that. And we want to learn long-term where can you extend the idea of a premium delivery experience. Is it high-end apparel? Is it cosmetics? You, know, you have estheticians that go to the home and instead of having your makeup done at Neiman's, Someone brings a beautiful makeup mirror, they're trained, you've got three lines you want to try. Let's start with your cleanser, let's go to your foundation, let's order your subscription, let's try a little color. You know, we think all of these things can be done really well in the privacy of a home for the premier brands that command a premium. And it seems silly for them to fall down and just ship something and let it sit on the doorstep and get a lot of returns. You know, so we're just kind of playing with new categories like we are with uh, Tiger. So we talked about your MPS being high 90s, which is remarkable. I know the average customer rating is 4.93. Share with us your best customer experience story, if you don't mind. Well, we get, we get a ton, about half, the, not quite half, but about 40% send us notes every day. And I received a note last Wednesday from a customer about one of our experts in Santa Fe that we actually played her story on Good Morning and Enjoy this Monday for the whole company to see. So it's about two minutes, it's a little long, and it's not a high-end video, but we'll play it. And this just gives you a glimpse into what an Enjoy expert is like. You know, you see Shantij is one of our experts, and this is her telling a story of a visit, and you'll get a feel for the company. So I think we have a little video set up. Fire up. There's days I get invited to stay for dinner, some days I do visits on top of the hood of a car, but it has never changed my approach when going on my visits. I always go into every visit with an open heart and open mind and the same goal. There's one particular day I know I'll never forget. This visit was out in the middle of nowhere. Um, I wanna say I drove almost like an hour to get there and it happened to be at a Shell gas station um, the enjoyer was a single mom who worked like three jobs and this just happened to be her weekend job. But anyway, she was upgrading uh, two 5C phones uh, to like an 8 and an 8 plus for her and her son. I remember walking in and shaking her hand, introducing myself and she immediately sat me down at a table kind of over by like the slushy machines and told me, you know, I could do the transaction right there. But she was kind of busy because she had to continue to like work the cash register. So and I got my stuff out and I started the visit. And when she got a little bit of free time, she sat down and immediately she was just telling me that she hadn't had money or to even think to upgrade a new phone in almost like five years. But this lady truly just needed someone to talk to someone to listen to her and I just happened to be that person I remember her telling me you know she was a single mom she ended up purchasing I want to say like four accessories and at the end of the visit wanted to tip me but I told her you know this is what we do at enjoy delivering this exceptional experience and that seeing her smile and being more educated about her new phones was by far enough. I remember she cried and insisted that I take the tip 
almost like it would offend her if I didn't because she was working so hard to be able to do this. I felt like the lady would have given me her shirt off her back, hands down, no questions asked. But after finally accepting the tip, I, I bought her lunch with it. It was truly like the most amazing visit that I've ever experienced. It made me realize why I work for Enjoy, and it was so much more than just delivering or activating or setting up a phone. I felt like we were friends, you know, at the end of the visit. I would have went out of my way to help her again, over and over. That's awesome. Yeah, but you get the idea of a, a personal delivery. It's the art of the human connection. And the beauty in this world today, you can create these economically, and that's the thrill of enjoy. So our experts do eight to 10 of those a day, and they go through doors, and they help people, and they're never hurried, and that's just one example. That's awesome. I've got two questions, one longer, one short. Longer. So Amazon has transformed commerce. Amazon Prime has been a big catalyst in the constellation of products. Talk about the future of digital commerce, and then also talk about the importance of experience or how you think of experience relates to the future of digital yeah, so commerce. So my read, Amazon's near the end of an incredible 20-year run. And what I mean by that, not the end. Amazon will continue to be a good company. Will they become a trillion-dollar market cap? I don't know. We'll see. But the history of uh, the retail industry has been people go on runs because they gain a real big competitive advantage. I watched Walmart do that from like 1985 to 95. I mean, everyone thought, who could compete with Walmart, right? Every period, the Gap had an incredible run in the 90s where, you know, the Academy Award, Sharon Stone's wearing her Gap t-shirt. People go through runs, but then eventually the industry starts to catch up. Right now, Walmart, Target are making huge progress in the U.S. against Amazon. We just watched the data. And since Amazon said they've got to go do physical stores to compete, like they bought Whole Foods, they clearly are trying to learn about, OK, I've got the online thing figured out. How do I go physical? It's a lot harder to learn physical than it is to learn online. So Walmart's now trying to learn to do online. And they've got Jet and all these things. But they're going to leverage their 2,000 stores as basically warehouses where customers can pick up, they can ship from there which is a lot lower cost than Amazon shipping network, no matter how they do it, because they've got to ship further. And so I think Amazon's obviously a great company, hugely innovative, but on the commerce side, they don't make a lot of money, and I don't think it'll be easier going forward. The fact that they raised the price of Pine by $20 says they're having trouble funding this, and they have no new customers to acquire. Because something like a third of America is already a Prime customer, and they invest to make that happen. So Amazon's growth is really coming from new countries, new market entries, but they don't succeed that well outside the U.S. and they got big competition. You know, Alibaba is big competition. You know, uh, uh, what's it called uh, in India that Walmart just bought is big competition. Yeah, flip, flip so there. Amazon's an amazing company, very innovative. Their cloud's doing well. They're growing sales, but I think if you look at the next ten years, you'll sense some of the other physical retails competing with them much better than did the past 10, if that makes sense. Hmm. Um, and I, I don't think people beyond really what we're doing have thought a lot about how do you deliver an experience when you start online. That's what's fun about what we're doing to enjoy. There are a lot of luxury models like Farfetch and whatever that are delivering high-end products, but they are delivering a product to the door. You know, I think we're one of the few that's going through doors. Um, but I think that'll become a part of it, you know, just like everything else does. Because I do think eventually we'll have more and more, we'll start online. You know, it might be 20 or 30 percent of purchases. But I don't think we're going to want to thud at the door for everything we buy. Yeah. Last question. Yeah. You guys have some great investors. Kleiner Perkins, mm -hmm. Oak, Riverwood. You guys. I was going to say. Who is the most smartest, most valuable investor? It's Mark Flynn and Mike Moe. You got it. Thank you. Yeah, no, they're all good. Hey, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you, Rob. Everybody, all right. Thank you. Thank you.